Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm here to teach you the last couple of steps to finally see your NFT on an open marketplace like OpenSea or Rarible. And what I mean by that is that you create your NFT, you mint it, and then you get to see all your hard work come to fruition on a website that is uh, open for everyone to see and buy and do whatever you want on it. So you're ready to deploy it on a testnet and see it for real on OpenSea. There are many different ways to reach this end goal. I want to show you a really simple and cool way to do it with a couple of pretty awesome uh, tools outside of Apeworks to uh, bring the whole Web3 ecosystem together because it's quite incredible and uh, it's really, uh, really, really fun. So there are nine really easy steps and uh, let's get started with the first one saying, creating a JSON file metadata. So based off of the EIP standard 1155, uh, you need to create your metadata as such. And what this metadata is, it is a, a way to represent um, some information that you're trying to put on the chain. And because all an NFT is, is a digital signature, which is a proof of ownership of something tangible. So, um, and the most common use case is having a picture of, of uh, having a picture assigned to an NFT. And when you select that NFT, there is some metadata behind it or some details behind it that you want to represent to show that it's yours or have anything that's linked to it. And you can read a little bit more about it here, as I've linked, and uh, go into it and put, put as much as you want. So once you um, create it, you're going to save it as a zero file. And then you want to host the picture of the NFT and then the dot and then the zero JSON file on a media manager. So I, I've used Pinata. It's a media manager company that for content creators and developers to like to integrate IPFS if, uh, IPFS uh, hosting system peer to peer. Uh, IPFS is a protocol hypermedia and file sharing peer to peer for storing and sharing data on on chain distributed file system. We will be using Pinata to manage the metadata file and image dependent on IPFS node to, for all to use and see. So if we were to go to it, click on these links to understand a little bit more, but Pinata is essentially this. And uh, say I've logged in, you log in, it looks like this. So what I mean by the .0 file is that you literally take that data, you, you, know, you, make, a, you make a file called so MKDIR zero. Actually, you can not even do it here. You can do it on Notepad. Let's just do it on Notepad. File, that, save, zero. Make sure you do all files, that, and you uh, save just like that. And you don't put an extension on it. You just name it zero because when you save it on as a, as a number, you can iterate through it as such. So it's just a little, it's a really simple way of putting it through. And when you run the code, you can generate new token URIs based off of that. Watch, and this, because this is the contract that we've been using before. And uh, let's see here, NFT token. Token URI, there you go. You went UNIT to string, token ID, add it there, just like that. So you want the first one to be that, so it's the metadata and as such. Okay. So once you uh, create it, you save it on Pinata by doing upload. Here you pick a specific file and it gives you CID, a content identifier. And this hash is basically the hash of what you put. So you put your picture, you put your ID on there, and then you're ready to go. So you put your picture here like this, uh, that ha hash ID, you click on, and then you make a, a zero file as such. 
and you put that image hash right here as such. Like, don't forget to delineate it with IPFS colon slash slash all of that in string. And then you put it all together like that. Okay, so now that you've saved the content ID, it's at the hash file, hash address, you take, and then you can also, also check it out to make sure that it works. Once you hash it, you can use gateway.pinata.cloud, the IPFS, for the image, or that zero file, and you can see it as such, just to make sure it's okay. And once you make it, uh, once you save it, you basically go into, into your contract, and you can go search IPFS, IPFS and reset the hash ID to whatever you want. If you like what you see or just want to see it work, you can keep it the default and uh, make sure and then you see it run. So now that you um, now that you have it now that you have your IPFS saved as uh, as your default or whatever you've set it to, you can try it out. So we're going to Want to try it out? And so note that remember that uh, OpenC was ring B, so we're going to try it out. I'll make sure we open the network as ring B, and then so you can check to make sure the ape um, has that network enabled by doing ape networks list, and you can see that Ethereum. Mainnet, Robson, Kovan, Rink B, Geth, or Alchemy. So it works. It's in there. If you install another network like Polygon or Optimism, you can see that it works here by doing uh, networks list as long as you install the plugin for it. So we're going to Ape Console, Dash Network. Ethereum Rink B Alchemy. Okay. Excellent. So now that we're in here, we can check to make sure that my dev account from Alchemy has some money in it just to make sure that it works. Some testnet money. I think it might be dev. Yes, we're okay. Excellent. So now we're going to go and create the contract. And we're going to go project.nft, which is the name of my contract. Dot deploy. And if you're not sure what's right for deploy, you can just check the script right here. And don't need URI. So you just do project.nft and then sender equal devs because you need to sign it. Yes. Here. And now it's going to be created. Okay, so while it's being created, you can check on Rink B because I have the Ether Scan plugin installed. It will automatically link this for me, which is great. Pop it open right here, and it's success contract, been a contract creation. And uh, when it's done confirming twice, we're going to mint and then verify it on OpenSea. So we're basically in the last minute, two minutes of success. And uh, that's it. Almost that's it. So let's uh, check it out. So the um, reason why I made a part two to this video is because there were a lot of cool things um, that we added or improved upon this because it was we felt it was quite important see here because we didn't have base uri here as such so we want to make that um, editable along with a couple of other things that were
extremely important, which I'll get into later. So this contract is created. Uh, let's do contract dot name, I believe. Ape NFT symbol. We didn't have total supply working completely, which was surprisingly. So we made sure that it worked this time. That's not how you spell it. There it is. Zero, because there's nothing minted. So contract dot mint. We can check the mint function here to make sure so we need know what we need. So we need to pick an address. So let's just do dev address. Comma sender equal dev. Sign it, yes. And the reason why dev didn't need to be in quotes is because it's a variable in the console. But if you wanted to add any kind of address, I would do a double quote with the address right there. Or if you wanted to do a dot eth, that would work too, as long as you have the plugin installed. So we refresh this. We can see that it's created. Um, and it's minting one right there. So let's copy this address. Let's go to the open C. And be there and it's not going to be as fast as you um it still needs to gather information it takes a little bit of uh, maybe a couple minutes but it should come up eventually so you can either search by contract address or the contract or the uh, dev address to see who has it dev that address there we go um, that's so I just put in the contract address earlier. Check this guy out. You can see it. Yeah. Um, I have a bunch of NFTs here uh, because I've made the same same <laughs> test a million times, but essentially it should look like this. So give it a couple of seconds, maybe a minute or two, and it should work. So um, verifying it on OpenSea or Rarible actually works too. There, test.net test rarible.com collection. Sure, you just need to sign into your MetaMask to your wallet. Just check this user. If we can do it properly. Um, but it should come up. So anyways. So now that you've verified it on OpenSea, you can uh, play with it. And so this is where you can mint to anybody you like. And this is how you kind of give it to all your friends. So, uh, you know, step eight is completely yours. Um, and then the step nine, you know, have some fun with it. Make a project. Do Make some profit, you know, whatever you like. So um, this is... This has been the, the last step to NFTs. And so I would say you're on a great uh, building foundation for a lot of these other projects that are quite incredible. Um, here are some in recommendations to, to do next. I would make a uh, front end, like a website to have your friends be able to mint an NFT. And I would love to have one. So just ping me on uh, Discord and uh, I'll try mint it and see if I can uh, grab it myself. Um, Please tell me what was a little easy or a little difficult to understand. I want to improve upon it. And with these foundation building blocks, join a hackathon. Um, any of these hackathons that have to do with Web3 have been incredibly fun and enjoyable for me. And I learn a lot from a lot of different people in workshops. And uh, say hello on Discord. So if you like what we uh, did, um, come, come say hello to us. And please enjoy the rest of the uh, tutorials we have here. Thanks so much for listening.